Well, hello, friends, and uh, welcome to the Serenity OS update for October 2019. Um, it's been a kind of an unusual month because I've been working on two big things this month instead of um, running around the system and working on everything. But before we get into that, let me just tell you about sponsorship real quick. So the Serenity operating system and all of my content about it is always going to be free and open source. But if you would like to support my work, and maybe one day make it possible for me to do this full time, then there are three donation options now. I'm on Patreon and PayPal, and also now in the GitHub Sponsors program. You can find links to these uh, in the description below. So if you're interested, please check them out. Uh, and if you're not interested, that's okay too. Everyone's welcome. It's always going to be free and open source. Um, but as always, a huge, huge thank you to those of you who are already supporting me on these platforms. I'm absolutely amazed with the amount of support that I've been getting, and it means so much to me. So, thank you. Now, about October. So, uh, it's been very different. Uh, I've been working on these two big apps. The first one is a new web browser called Browser, and the second one is a C++ IDE called Hack Studio. So, let me show you the browser. So, this is what it looks like. It's uh, just called Browser, or Serenity Browser, if you will. And it's using the libhtml engine, which is um, Serenity's own HTML engine. Uh, it knows some HTML, some CSS. There's no scripting language yet, um, because there's just been plenty of work to do on, on just basic stuff like text layout. Like here you can see um, text alignments. So we've got justify, right align, center, and left align. Um, we have the link element, which loads the style sheet from an external source. Um, which is pretty neat. Uh, we have the blink element. I'm bringing it back, deal with it. And you can see these little CSS hover effects here, coloring the links when you hover them. I, uh, I'm, I like that a lot. <laughs> and um, we can go on the web, of course. This is the serenityos.org website. It wouldn't be right to not be able to browse the project website. Um, and when I was added to GitHub Sponsors, I actually made this little promo page about it because I thought it would be cool to show off, you know, the browser uh, being able to browse the promo page. And I still think that's pretty cool. Uh, so this is the browser. Uh, I've spent a lot of time on it already, um, but then I got kind of into doing the IDE. But this is, of, co of course, something that will continue. It's but it's, it's at the point now where it's basically usable as a rich text, um, read-only rich text widget in the um, system, which I'm very happy about, because it means that we can start finding um, different applications for it. And then, but of course, I would also like to keep improving it as a HTML and CSS engine over time. Um, but yeah. This is the browser. I make lots of videos about hacking on it. If you're interested, just go check them out in the video, um, in my videos. Um, and then let me show you something else that also uses libhtml. So the help browser, which is our documentation browser, um, now has these links here in the see also section. So if one man page links to another, you can just click there and you end up in the other man page. So Sergey did that. So thank you, Sergey. It's very cool. Um, and then let me show you the IDE. So this is Hack Studio. It's a simple C++ IDE that I started working on. And um, you can edit your code. And you can see uh, here is an example of documentation pop-up. If you hover over MKDR, you can get like a little documentation pop-up for that syscall. And um, if we try to build here, we get this little console popping up and it tells us that mkdir is not declared. And let's just look at that documentation thing and it um, tells us that we need includes sysstat. So we can just uh, add that and we'll save and we'll try to build again. And it went a little better that time. So we can run and we see that it totally runs. And uh, you might notice that we have C++ syntax highlighting, which I implemented completely in, in one video, if you're interested in that. Pretty cool. Uh, I, I really like how it updates as you type. It's not the most efficient implementation, but it does work. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy with this stuff. 
let's, uh, let's run that again and print a little more stuff. Boom, look at that. Um, and uh, the IDE has a few more features. You can, for instance, you can find in files, which lets us search the whole repository. So we'll search for hello. And we can see that it's in main CPP on line six. Um, that doesn't seem accurate. <laughs> um, why does it think that it's there? I don't know. Maybe it has an old, um, wait. Okay, now nothing is working right. Why is that? Oh, my double clicking is not working right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> there are bugs, uh, lots and lots of bugs, but um, this stuff is still being worked on. Um, I don't know why I was saying main CVP line six. That's totally wrong. Probably it's using some old version of the file to look through, but Anyways, uh, <laughs> a lot of little things to fix. And then it also has this locator down here where you can search, uh, this is a filter search. So you can type like file and it shows you uh, file names that have file in them. And this is obviously really useful in a bigger project. Here in this tiny project, it's, it's limited use. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is just the start of the IDE. I've been working on it for the last two weeks, I feel like. Um, maybe a bit less than that. So it's still very, very early, but it is fun. And um, I've gotten great response to the videos where I hack on it and people are very enthusiastic and it's really fun. So uh, check those out if you're interested. Um, and uh, what else is there? Um, let me show you the new hex editor app that Brandon has made. So let me show you, we'll open up a WAV file. And uh, it's a pretty standard text editor. We can put cafe dead. Um, you can do stuff like uh, select and you can copy stuff. You can copy it as hex, but you can also copy a C code, which I like, because then you get this kind of copying. You can just paste it into your uh, editor where you're making a program. Very cool. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so thank you, Brandon, for working on that. And there's some new stuff in System Monitor. So you'll notice when I click on this, it's going to start up real fast. Boom. It used to take more than a second to start this thing, but um, I did a whole bunch of optimizations and uh, making the um, GUI lazily loaded. So now it starts up quick because these things are not actually populated until we open them for the first time. So you'll see here now it starts filling in the graphs and um, these things, they're lazily loaded basically. But it's, it's very handy. And then another thing is we have these uh, fault counters here now. So this is the number of page faults in different categories. Uh, here is page faults where we have to page in from disk. So those are called inode faults. Here is uh, zero faults where we have, to, um, we have to zero out a page of memory because it's the first time it's used. So we have to make sure that it's all zeros. Otherwise, we might give a process um, uninitialized memory from some other process, and we don't want that. And then we also have copy on write um, faults, which is where two processes share a page of memory, but one of them wants to make a change to it, and then he has to be uh, made his own like unique copy of that so that he doesn't change the shared copy, because it was only shared as an optimization. Uh, so those are three new counters that we have here. And uh, what else did I want to show? Um, check my cheat sheet. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> and um, there's this new thing that Drew did, which is um, terminal line disciplines. So we now have a canonical mode where we can, wait, why does this not work? Cat. Okay, I don't know what the hell is happening. Why is that not working? Okay, I guess that uh, terminal was borked somehow. Um, we can do cat to a file, and I have line editing capabilities here now. I can like type and go backwards and stuff. Previously, when you did this, you would get absolutely nothing. Um, so this is a way I like to create files often, because then they come out like that. 
And if you just want to create a file quickly in Unix, you can do like, you know, includes the IO. Sometimes I, I write little programs like this. Um, it's, it's a pretty terrible way of writing programs, but if you're in a hurry, then just sometimes it just feels right. And I'm really happy that we have it in the system now. So thank you, Drew, for working on that. And then uh, we have this new feature where if I drag a window when it's maximized, then boom, it becomes unmaximized. Previously, it would just stay maximized and you would drag this huge window around. Uh, so that's, that's a nice fix. Um, and then we have a bunch of invisible changes that are really hard to demo, but um, there are some new ports, like Vincent did Zlib and libiconv, and um, I don't have an audio set up here right now, but um, Till did um, fixing some stutter in the audio um, converter or the audio uh, loader, and he also made it so that playing a sound file uh, actually plays to the end instead of stop stopping playback just before the end, which was a stupid bug we had. So thank you, Till. Um, and the kernel has gotten a bunch of fixes, so like we now support GUID partitions. So thank you, Liav. And um, processes can now receive segmentation fault signals. Previously, we would just like kill the process, but now it can actually um, hook uh, segmentation fault and do something about it themselves. So it's pretty neat. But there are all kinds of other things too, but it's just, it's just hard to, to show all these things. Um, so, but these were all basically all the visual changes that I could think to, to show you. So I guess thank you for tuning in and keeping up to date with the project. It's been a strange month, but it's been very fun, very interesting. Um, and I'm particularly happy with how the IDE stuff is going, because, I mean, obviously you see that it has bugs. All of these things have bugs, and, and they, these things get better over time. Um, but it's a still fun and exciting time for the project. We're in the new year now, new year of the project, and um, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. So thank you again for checking this out and for your continued interest in the Serenity OS project. Uh, if you ever want to chat, you can find us all in the Serenity OS channel on Freenode. Um, there's always a bunch of people in there, and uh, there's always someone to talk to if you have questions. Um, so yeah, I'll see you next time.